is the gift hallelujah this is the gift this is the gift that we are gathered here to celebrate in jesus mighty name there is a reason for the season and we are going to get into the word any minute from now we are gathered here hallelujah in jesus mighty name to celebrate the gift of god to mankind the only gift that could ever matter hallelujah father christmas is here or not here but there's one thing that we know for sure is that there is a gift that God has given to all mankind in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We glorify your holy name. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the word that is going to be taught this morning. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. Just type in the comment section the gift. The gift. I do not want to complicate. I always ask God for inspiration and say, God, just give me that, 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 that message that whatever it is, my God, that you know, that could be just spicy enough that would catch somebody as they're just trying to pass through. And if they're looking through YouTube, they will just see this big message. Hallelujah. Glory to the living God. Glory to the living God. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 8 verse 32. Romans 8 verse 32. That is where we are starting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The gift of God, the gift. I just simply title it the gift because I believe that the Holy Spirit might send me in different directions. I want to also talk a little bit about the gifts of the Holy Spirit as well this morning and also to pray through our gifts in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Are we there? Romans 8 verse 32. The book of Romans 8, 32. The Bible says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? What a beautiful piece of scripture. Hallelujah. An ultimate awesome piece of scripture that lets us know that God sacrificed the ultimate sacrifice. He gave you the ultimate gift. Hallelujah. He did not spare his own son, his own blood. So if somebody is able to give their life for you, why would they not sacrifice to give you all things? Why would they not give you the things that you're expecting under the Christmas tree, for example? So Father, my prayer this morning is that if you could give me anything, if you could give me Jesus, anything that is a Christmas present is possible. The gift, the surprise that I'm looking forward to. I know you are able to do that for me exceedingly abundantly more than I could ever expect. Because if you could sacrifice your only begotten son, my father. What is it that I would need materially? What is that gift that I could really be struggling for in Jesus name? The gift, the gift is what we're talking about. Romans 8.32 is our anchor scripture. So, Father, I'm asking, oh God. More than asking, I think I'm just wanting to position this as a thank you. To say thank you because I know you gave blood for me. And I know that there is no gift that could ever be impossible for you to give. The greatest gift given to mankind, child of God, has been the gift of God. The gift of Jesus Christ himself. He gave himself. John chapter 10 verse 7 to 10 says, So Jesus said again, I assure you and most solemnly I say to you, I am the door for the sheep. I am the door that leads to life. I am the door. All who came before me are false. Hallelujah. I am the door. I am the gift of life. Everybody who came before me is a fake. All who came before me and called themselves the Messiah, they are not really the Messiahs in Jesus' name. They were self-appointed leaders. 
They were thieves and robbers because they cloned me. They thought they could make as if and deceive others. But the true ship did not hear them. I am the door, says Jesus. So we pray to the door and we're asking God, God, open up the door that can only lead us to the truth of the gospel, the truth of who you are. I am the door. Anyone who enters through me will be saved. I am the door that you need to enter into when you feel like you need deliverance, when you feel like things are falling apart. And anyone who enters through that door will have eternal life. I will live forever and you will live forever. You, re- you exchange immortality or mortality for immortality when you go through that particular door. Why am I emphasizing through teaching the word this morning is that you understand the exchange that happened when you got born again. Anyone who enters through me will go in and they will go out freely because in my world, in my kingdom, it's a kingdom of freedom. It's not a kingdom of compulsory. It's not a kingdom of caging you. It's not a kingdom of, 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 of grounding you against your will. I am a God of free will. You can go in and out as you wish, and you will find pasture. You will find spiritual security. Hallelujah. You will find the security you will find the feeding and the needs that you have will be met at that point. And then he goes on to emphasize in verse 10, he says, the thief, however, when he comes in, he comes in to steal, kill, and destroy. So that is how you can differentiate whether it is me that is in your life, whether it is me that has entered, or whether it is you who has entered into which door you have entered. Anytime you find yourself that you've gone through a door and you're experiencing things being stolen from you, You are experiencing destruction. You are experiencing death in all its ramifications. You understand that, no, 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 no. I need to reverse. I've clearly opened a door or I've entered a door that is not supposed to be the door that I was supposed to go through. And then he gives you the assurance. He says, I came. I came that they may have life and have it in abundance, have it to the full until it overflows. I came so that they have the comforts of understanding that the joy that I've put inside of them does not have to have a tap that leaks. I came so that they can understand that the joy, the prosperity, the stability and the protection that I'm giving them is this kind of protection that is foolproof that you don't need to pay an installment for every single month. So what is a gift, Pastor Fortune, that you're talking about this morning? A gift is simply a present. There's nothing complicated. Even when you open the dictionary, the, the, the dictionary tells you that a gift is a present. It's something that is given to somebody. You don't pay for it. You don't apply for it. There is no prize to it. It's a gift. That is why if anybody gives you a gift and makes you pay for it, then you have to ask and say, no, 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 this thing is fake. Now I started asking myself the question. I say, what did men do to deserve this gift? What did I do, God, that you gave me this gift? And the answer is simply nothing. In the book of Psalms, chapter 8, verse 4 to 5, the Bible says, what is man that you are so mindful of him? And the son of an earthborn woman that you care for him. This guy upstairs could have done anything with his time. He could have been sitting there playing games. He could have sat there and enjoyed everything by himself. But he said, you know what? I'm going to create mankind. And when mankind got himself into trouble, he said, I'm going to send them a savior. Yet this man that you, God, um, you are finicky about him. He's so worried about you, about your well-being. You have made him a little lower than a God. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. So this Psalms chapter 8 is talking about me and you. Emphasizing and re-emphasizing. God bless you, prophetess. That it's, it's, it's emphasizing and re-emphasizing. 
that God has got you in mind. God has got your back. God is only thinking about you. He elevates you to the point that he says, you know what? You are God's little children. What did man deserve to have such a gift of our Lord Jesus Christ? And the answer is simply nothing. 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 You did not do anything. But God in his mercy decided to give his only begotten son. Genesis 6, 5, Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, he says, The Lord saw the wickedness of men was being so, it, it, it was it's getting to a magnitude on earth. It was growing big. And every imagination or intent of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continuously because God looked and said, why is mankind sabotaging itself? Why is mankind destroying itself and destroying one another? And he comes back on John 3, 16. He says, for God so loved the world. He prized you so dearly that he decided to redeem you with blood of his son, that he even gave his only begotten son so that whoever shall choose to believe in him shall live. Whoever chooses to trust in him shall not perish, but they will have eternal life and have it in abundance. So God did this thing out of love for me and you. God bless him, shows up. Despite the wickedness of men. So I, I'm emphasizing this so that you can understand that there is no sin. There is nothing that you could have done that is so bad that God would not come back and redeem you. There is nothing so bad that you could have possibly done or even yesterday or even today that God would lock you out and say, I'm not going to give you my love, my benefit. I'm not going to remove that which is, what, what, which is suffering you or making you suffer. The Lord regretted that he had made mankind on earth and he was deeply grieved in his heart. But yet still, he still chose to send his only begotten son to redeem the first Adam. So as we celebrate the season, I want you to celebrate the season with context and understand that it's not a season just for the chocolates. It's not a season just to go buy Christmas clothes. But it is a season that you need to take time out to worship him, to understand the sacrifice. There are many people who are having religious holidays throughout the year. And you look at them and you see the seriousness at which they approach their various seasons. And you don't understand. But the world has made you understand that Christmas is about buying gifts. Christmas is about spending money and making parties. No sir, no ma'am. It is not all about that. If Christians can stop and pause and understand that you have just been given one day others get three days others get five days others get a whole month celebrating on whether they're celebrating ramadan or whatever excursions of a religious nature that they go to but they you have just given one day and even in that one day you were not given the opportunity to just focus on your christ they decided to put every single thing in, in it to make it as if it was just about gifts and clothing no, sir. No, ma'am. This is the time to worship God in this season. To remember the gift. This is the season to remember the gift. We don't, we hardly have enough holidays as is as Christians. So cherish the one that the world has decided to stop for. No, ma'am, it's not a season for you to sit around with family and just eat. Yes, I know we're going to eat and do all sorts of things. But what are we doing? And while we are sitting with our family members, are we stopping to actually praise God? So why is the birth of Jesus regarded as the greatest gift? Because he came to rescue us from destruction. John 3, 18, he says, whoever believes and has decided to trust, you believe and you decided to trust in him as your own personal savior and Lord, is that, that you escape the judgment because of the sin. For this one, there is no judgment. There is no rejection. There is no condemnation. He came so that he can remind you that you don't have to condemn yourself when you've done something wrong you don't have to think that things cannot be made right again one more time but he is the one who he is your personal savior he came to remind you that he has already judged and he's the one that will judge 
that the devil does not have to judge you and come back to judge you, that you can escape his accusations, that you don't have to condemn yourself, that you can forgive yourself. He came so that you can escape judgment. Why did he come? Why did you receive this greatest gift of man? He came to give you life by giving his own life. Understand and comprehend that he gave his own life for you. No one has greater love, no stronger commitment than to lay down his life for his friends. Your friends may not lay down their lives for you. Maybe even when you are facing danger, they have run away. But this guy says, no, 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 no. I'll give my life for you. Why did you receive the greatest gift of mankind? He came to heal. The gift was given so that you can be healed. He came to heal us and make us vessels through, through, through which his healing virtues can flow. So I understand that my healing, whether physical or emotional or mental, is, is got a, 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 an assignment and a mandate to it so that I can also let the healing virtues flow through me so that others can also be healed. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our wickedness and our iniquities. He was, weak, he was crushed for our sins our injustice. He was crushed for our wrongdoings. The punishment that was required, there was a punishment. There is always a punishment for every action. There is a reaction, but the punishment that was required to be paid for, 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 for us, he, it, it fell upon him. He took it away and he said, you don't have to die. I will die in your stead by his stripes. I am therefore healed. Why did he come? Why did I get the gift? You got the gift so that these signs shall accompany you as you choose to believe. He says, in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if they drink of any poisonous deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will get well. So I understand that all these things are gifts that are supposed to manifest through me. I am supposed to heal the sick. I am supposed to pick up serpents without the fear of being hurt. I am made for warfare. I am made to be a warrior. No poisonous thing is supposed to affect me. He came so that I may be delivered from poverty. Do you understand why you got the gift? Yes, you can. he came so that he can deliver you from poverty. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9 says, For you are, re you are recognizing more clearly the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, his astonishing kindness, his generosity, his gracious favor, that though he was rich, yet for my sake and your sake he was made poor, so that by his poverty we may become rich, abundantly blessed. He came so that we can have a reset. This gift was given as a reset. So that I can understand that in this moment of being reset, I'm able to now switch over to an abundance life. And abundance don't mean just the rents and dollars and cents. Yes, it can also include that. But it is abundance in, in fullness, understanding that I'm in control. I'm in charge of my world. I can recreate my world anytime and anyhow. Why did you receive this gift? This gift, he came to give you this gift so that you are saved from the sins and you are empowered to live a righteous life. He came so that you can understand that he is your salvation. He is the deliverance that you need. No, you don't need a concoction from me that needs the, that is looking green or blue. You know you don't need a goat. You need the gift. So it's not just enough to be saved from your sin, but it is important to also live a righteous life. Don't duck the righteous life and look for quick fixes of, of, of goats and, and, and bulls that you want to slaughter. So you need to pursue the righteous life so that you can understand and appreciate this gift. And in this pursuit, it's only possible by the grace of God. 
It is made possible through the grace of God, which is supplied. How? How do you get this gift? Through the Christ Jesus. Through the anointing that is in Christ Jesus. In John chapter 15, he says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I remain in you, you will bear much fruit. The gift is given so that you become fruitful. The gift is given so that you can experience the fruitfulness which he mandated you in the book of Genesis 1, 28. Apart from me, you cannot do anything. Apart from me, when you decide to subtract me from your life, when you decide to make me look like Easter eggs, when you decide to make it about a, 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 a Christmas trees, you understand that you can't do anything if you now just, 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 just worship me and understand that this whole connection that we have so that you can bear the fruits that are relevant stop majoring in the minors but major in the majors and understand that i called you for a bigger purpose and i called you for a bigger assignment i called you to take over the mountains of the earth i called you so that you can understand that i've given you a gift that will enable you to understand that you can do all three th things through me there is a gift inside of me. Oh, help me take your neighbor and tell them I have a gift. There is a gift. This gift is placed inside of you for a reason. So without Jesus, I can't make it. Without Jesus, I can't even make it to heaven. I can't even make it anyway. That is why he says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to me except, no one can even get to the Father except through me. So if you think you're going to bypass Jesus and call him a prophet and call him whatever it is, and you think he's not the same guy with God, and you think that you're going to access God and do whatever you want. No, 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 say, no, 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 no. I came. You want to get to God? Through me. Via the anointing. He came to lead you to a point where you understand that you don't have to live a life of misery, but you can live a life of paradise. And my question to you this morning before we begin to pray is that will you accept this gift from God? Will you accept this gift from God? Father, as we begin to pray, I pray, oh God, that you rescue us and you rescue our family from every evil that is left in this world, in this year. Lord, we are getting ready to cross over to the new year and we are getting ready to cross over victoriously in Jesus' mighty name. So Father, as we prepare for crossover in the new year, Father, we pray, Lord, let us have a taste of the abundant life that is available through Christ Jesus. Let us have a full appreciation of this gift that you have given us in Jesus' mighty name. Father, in this season and in the coming year, give us an overflowing portion of your riches and honor. Give me a life that overflows in every department. In this season, in this coming year, whatever needs to be repaired, whether it's repaired in my life, whether it's repaired in anything that I may even be materially owning, oh God, whether there's something that needs to be repaired in my body, oh God, this day as I choose to stop and reflect, they called it Christmas. I choose to stop and reflect and worship you and worship the anointing that is all about this season. And for the rest of my life and for the rest of my days, let your healing virtues flow through me. Father, grant me the request that I've made this year. You did not spare your own son, your own son, that I may live, that I may live in abundance. So Father, I know that you have put gifts inside of me and these gifts of God shall flourish. You see the gift. God is so generous that not only does he give you a gift that is in Christ Jesus. But he also gives you spiritual gifts so that you can manifest. And you continue to be the gift in your own life and beyond and to others. And he says he gave some apostles. He gave some prophets. He gave some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. For the perfection of the saints and the edification of the saints and the edification of the body of Christ. So Father, as we pray this morning, I also pray for spiritual gifts. 
I pray for an impartation this morning of spiritual gifts of those who are on PBP. Everybody under the sound of my voice. Everybody who's still trying to even find themselves in terms of what God has called them to do and what they need to do. God, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, let them take manifestation in us in Jesus' mighty name. As Christians, you need to understand that we need to, we need spiritual gifts to give quality service to God. We need the spiritual gifts that God has given us. You need to find that what that is. It is the spiritual gifts in us that helps us to showcase the greater works done by God. It is the spiritual gifts that are in us that help us to showcase the greater gifts of God to understand so that the world can understand there is the gift. The gift carries with it the gifts that we have inside of us. So signs and wonders, as he says, shall follow them that believe. You believe in what? In the gift. So signs and wonders begin to follow you. They are influenced by the spiritual gifts that are inside of you. So that gift that is inside of you has given birth to more gifts inside of you. And those gifts inside of you, they influence the signs and wonders that begin to be seen beyond and outside of you. And why is that gift given? So that you may draw men to him. So that you may draw unbelievers to him. So that you can draw others to the knowledge of God. That is why. God bless you too. Welcome to the family. Welcome to everybody who's clicking that follow button. It is given so that you can draw unbelievers to the knowledge of God. So now, I hope you're tracking to, with me so that you understand this gift very well. As a child of God, you must desire to have spiritual gifts bestowed on you. So today, I want you just this morning, my, my, my desire is that you activate the spiritual gifts inside of you while you're worshiping God and thanking him for the gift that he has given you. Desire spiritual gifts by the Holy Spirit and pray to manifest them in your daily Christian life. They are given to you by grace, not by merit. Not because you did something, not because you went for a trial and you went and danced around for 12 months, 5, 17 months, whatever it is. Sincerely desire them. They are given so that you can become a blessing to others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, let the gift of wisdom manifest inside of me as you are praying, PPP. Let the gift of integrity manifest inside of you. Let the gifts of God that he has put inside of you so manifest that the kingdom begins to propagate. The kingdom begins to expand in Jesus' mighty name. Let men be drawn to the kingdom of God because of the gifts that have been put inside of you. We have many spiritual gifts, but the Bible teaches us about nine gifts in the book of 1 Corinthians. Hallelujah. Engage in prayers, asking God, activate that spiritual gift that is inside of me. Some of you are dreamers. Some of you are so are prophetic, but you're not activating. You are, you are, you are leaving this thing dormant. Some of you are teachers of the word evangelists sitting idling don't check out and say when we get to oh they, they will just say on your biography he loved god she loved god is that it and then what did you do what else hallelujah so when you take these gifts and you combine them with the fruits of the holy spirit my god you become explosive So this morning, I pray that we can bring out the manifestation of those spiritual gifts as we engage further in prayer. Father, I worship you. Thank you, Lord, for the preserving power upon our lives. Be glorified. Be glorified. We worship you. Father, as we continue to pray, Lord, we ask for the grace to manifest the gifts of the Spirit given to us in Jesus' mighty name. Father, arise and do a new thing in our lives this morning. Bring every defilement to the submission of God. Fill us with your spirit, O oh God. Fill us with the spirit of wisdom, O oh God. 
Make us a showcase and make us to show off the knowledge of who you are. Everywhere we go in Jesus' mighty name, may we show off the gifts that you have given us in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, make us a branch that will manifest and draw every good gift of the Holy Spirit from you always in Jesus' name. Make me a branch that will show off the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Spirit of the living God, rest upon every single person under the sound of my voice right now in your mighty power in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that everything in us and around us, my God, shall reflect you. Everything in us and around us, oh God, shall chase away things that are not planted by you shall uproot evil from the world because of this gift that you have given us. Father God, open our eyes to see the gifts that you have bestowed on us, O oh God, so that we don't waste them. Father, I ask, O oh God, that by your spirit, by your Holy Spirit, you refine us, you purify us, that you purge our life with your fire in Jesus' mighty name. Anything, God, that you don't want in us, O oh God, let it be purged out in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, we ask, oh God, that you breathe your life. Breathe into us, oh God. Give breath into our soul. Make us ready to go where you send us, oh God. Somebody click on that comment section and type, here I am, Lord, send me. I don't know what are you waiting for if you don't want to be sent by God. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we give you permission to walk freely in us. Come in as out as you please so that you help us to accomplish your purpose in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for the gift. Father, I ask, oh God, that the spirit, that the flame of the spirit, the flame of the Holy Spirit be set ablaze in us. Let the flame of the Holy Spirit blaze upon this altar of protocol breaking prayers, oh God. Let the altar burn. Let the altar burn with fire, oh God. Let the Holy Spirit be set ablaze. On this altar and in our hearts in Jesus mighty name. Father as I continue to pray as we continue to reflect on the reason for the season of God. We ask oh God that you order our steps. We ask oh God that you let our purpose be aligned with the plans of the Holy Spirit. Let your plans be aligned with the plans of the Holy Spirit. That is your prayer. Father, let my plans be aligned with the plans of the Holy Spirit. My prayer for you, PBP, this morning is that the Holy Spirit will stir up that spiritual gift inside of you. That the Holy Spirit will stir up the virtue and the potential that God has positioned in your life. The gifts that God has positioned in your life. The potential that is untapped will come out. That gift, that talent, that skill, that thing that God wants to use to showcase you. May it come out in Jesus' mighty name and manifest. That thing that is lying dormant inside of you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I prophesy that it shall come out in the name of Jesus. My father, my father, let the Holy Spirit use us as vessels this morning. Let it use us as vessel even in 2024. Father, we understand the assignment. We will continue to convey your will. The will of God, not the will of men. On this earth and beyond in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray, Lord, that you grant us the grace and courage to use our spiritual gifts that you have given to us by the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Hey, somebody take your neighbor and say, no way, I can't be lazy about this thing. That gift that is lying dormant inside of you must be activated this morning. Holy Spirit, fill my life with your revelational gifts. Make me manifest these gifts in all areas of my life. 
It is an error, child of God, that the only time you will receive a prophecy if it is coming from a third party is a lie. You mean you cannot dream? You can't see? You can't hear? Uh Uh-uh, the devil is a liar. Uh Uh-uh. There's a gift inside of you. Open up your mouth. Father, let your revelational gifts be manifest inside of me. I'm not saying walk around and become a prophet, but no, I'm saying you have to be able to get the, activate that, that gift inside of you to be able to know certain things by yourself, with your God, in your closet. Father, as I continue to pray for those who are in PBP and listening to the sound of my voice right now, Father, I pray that every plan of the evil one of the devil to make us irrelevant, any plan of the devil to make us ineffective in your service, I command a destruction by the fire of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. I activate the spiritual gifts of this house. We are relevant and will continue to be relevant in Jesus' mighty name. Father, strengthen us in all areas where we are weak. Strengthen us in areas where we are weak and reveal to us those weak points so that we can deal with them and remain intimate in relationship with you. Let my intimate relationship with you improve from today henceforth in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we receive the power to see clearly. Open up your mouth and pray. Father, I receive the power to see clearly. Let it supernaturally fall upon your life right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. May you receive the power to see clearly. May the Lord baptize you with the fire that you may do exploits for him. Generational exploits that they will talk about you beyond your existence on this planet earth. Father, I pray, Lord, that you baptize us this morning with the fire to operate in the supernatural, manifesting the gift. Oh, somebody say, I will manifest the gift. I will manifest the gift. I will manifest the gift. I will operate in the supernatural. I will will subdue this flesh and I will operate in the supernatural. There must be things that cannot touch you, child of God. You must reach a dimension where where you know when you speak something, it comes to pass. That is why we count our words. I laughed the other day when I was was texting my husband and saying, did you see this testimony from this person? And, and he laughed and he said to me, me, I know when I say something, it comes to pass. And I, I, I said, don't be arrogant, be humble. But yes, there comes a level in your Christian walk that you know when you say something, it will actually come to pass. That is why you need to be very careful. I used to be very worried when trollers would come on the broadcast And I would want to curse them. And I would want to go into the prophetic and say, I'm going to do this. God, do this to them. God, do this. And he he rebuked me. And my husband reminded me, says, the gift was not given for you to do that. And I said, but but God, I know I can do this. He says, no, give them over to God. Stop trying to manipulate and do your own things. Then what is the difference between you and the witches? I say, okay, I back off. So there comes a point, the the, the point I'm trying to teach you is this. What comes out from this thing of yours, your mouth is very dangerous. So be very careful. When you use it, use it strategically. That's why when we are dealing with witches and wizards, I don't mind. The Bible says, suffer a witch not to live. That's why we can open up our mouth and just send them out there. Edna, you know, you see... I'm telling you, it's very dangerous, hey? It's very dangerous. He says, what I say, when I choose to say it. So he says, I'm not surprised. When I say it, it comes to pass. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, strengthen us in our weaknesses, oh God. Father, we pray this morning as we 
even venture into warfare, oh God. That any power that is making us to leak spiritually, any spiritual leakage in our life, I command that spiritual leakage to dry up in the mighty name of Jesus. I command that spiritual leakage to dry up in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, awaken our spirit men. Awaken our spirit men. Your spirit man must not be in sleep mode now. Awaken our spirit man from any demonic sleep. We receive the grace to manifest the hidden gifts that are inside of us. It's time to activate. It's time to activate. When you get, when you get to pray for somebody, you must not pray as if, I don't know, it's up to God ultimately. No, it is, it's going to happen. I said it. You walk out with your confidence. It's not you doing it. It's God doing it, Mus. Just say it and move on. Father, let my spirit man be alive. Activation. Activation. The spiritual gifts inside of you. Awake, awake my spirit man from any demonic sleep that they are trying to make you sleep on. Oh Lord, we receive the ability to discern the spirit in operation in every situation. We receive the spirit of discernment in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I prophesy that every single member of PBP and those who are listening to the sound of my voice for as far as they will plug themselves to this thing in. That they will begin to operate in the realm of the divine. They will begin to operate in the realm of the divine. They will begin to operate in the realm of the divine. And Father God, they will operate also in the realm of the divine wisdom of God. Give them the grace of knowing the word of God. Give them the grace of teaching the word of God. Give them the grace of drawing from the word of God. Revelation knowledge that is a secret. Many people can read the same scriptures and not catch the revelation out of it. I decree and I declare that as from today, you will begin to manifest the hidden spiritual gifts in the Holy Spirit. Your gifts of the Spirit that have been hidden, I call them out to manifestation. I call them out into manifestation. I bless the God who is answering this prayer this morning. I bless you, God, because you are worthy. You are worthy of all praises and you are worthy of all adoration. We call forth, we call forth these gifts, O God, in Jesus' mighty name. There shall be a manifestation. There shall be a manifestation. We praise your God. Every hidden gift, it's coming forth in the name of Jesus. Father, as I close, I just want to say thank you. Open up your mouth, guys. Let's pray and, and thank God for the next seven minutes. Let's just go into thankful mode. Thank you, God, for keeping us alive. Open up your mouth and thank God for the gift of life. Thank you, Lord, that even when we were wayward, when we were behaving like hooligans and anything else, you kept us. Thank you for your protection and thank you for your provision, O oh God. And that is, not, that is how we know, O oh God, we are still here. And you're the reason we're still here. Thank you, Lord, for choosing us. And thank you, Lord, for the calling that you have given us in our lives. And Father, this morning we recommit ourselves. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Lord, therefore, we submit ourselves to you. And we give you access to our heart. And we say, Lord, use us as your vessels in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we pray for the grace to remain humble. 
We pray for a deeper revelation. We pray for a closer relationship. We pray for a greater understanding of your mind. We pray, O oh God, that whatever breaks us down, that you will break it down in Jesus' mighty name. Whatever is hindering us from being fully committed to you, O oh God, that you are removing in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for a greater love. We pray for a greater compassion. We pray for greater boldness, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, that we do not waste this gift that you have put inside of us in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you, Lord, for purification of heart. I thank you, Lord, for purification of our motives, oh God, that we don't just serve you for the goodies, but we serve you for who you are, that you do not do things, my God, that we understand that you don't just do things just for the physical pleasures of our own understanding, but we we must understand that the, the graces and the blessings that you give us, oh God, are for the edification of the saints and for the multiplication of the kingdom of God, oh God. We thank you, oh God. So this morning again, oh God, I pray for PBP. I pray, oh God, for impartation. I pray for impartation. I pray for impartation. I pray for impartation. I pray for implantation. I pray for an activation. I pray for an implantation of gifts, oh God. The gifts of God. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, oh God. I pray for the activation of those spirits, oh God. That's the, the, Those gifts of the Spirit, oh God. The fruits of the Spirit, oh God. I pray for the activation in Jesus' mighty name. I pray, oh God, for every activation of every dormant spirit, spiritual gift, physical gift that is inside of us, oh God. Let there be an activation in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I pray that the grace that you have placed upon this altar, oh God, begins to flow to every individual that shows up here every single day. I pray, oh God, for the manifestation of the gift of prophecy to overflow. I pray for wisdom. I pray for faith to grow in abundance. I pray for healings all around. I pray for the manifestation of the miraculous. I pray, oh God, for the manifestation of your power. I pray, oh God, that every single member of PBP shall be made to be an epitome in this earth. I pray, PBP, everybody under the sound of my voice, that everybody that will come into contact with you shall experience the power of the Holy Spirit inside of you and through you. I pray, PBP, that the Lord will use you as a vessel, as a medium to do his will on this planet Earth. I pray for you, PBP, that the Lord will use the works of your hands to do mighty works on this Earth. I pray for you, PBP, that the Lord will, 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 will make you known by your generation as a mighty vessel of God. I pray that when you step into a room, demons will recognize you and, and the demons will recognize your anointing and they will tremble at your presence. They will not look at you as a weakling, as, if, as of now. Some of you, the attacks that you are facing, is because they are trembling. Because they know that once you are rooted. So I pray for an anointing. That will fall on you so, so massively. We will preach this gospel. We will be of one accord on PBP. Anybody who's not on one accord. Who's got a different motive. They will leave. And it, We've got the gift of bye-bye. No problem. I pray for you, PBP, that you will experience the favor of God before God and men. In the eyes of men, as you stand, you shall be favored in Jesus' mighty name. I pray, Lord, that you will give them an utterance, not only in ministry of God, but even in their workplaces. When you stand up to talk, people will listen. People will give you the respect that you need. People reporting to you when you stand in boardrooms, people will listen to you. I pray for supernatural visitations upon you. I pray for your prophetic eyes to be open. You will have laser discernment. You will be able to spot these demons a mile away and fire arrows that will destroy them. 
I pray for deliverance for those who need deliverance this morning. I came, I, I, I pray against every form of demonic lust, perversion, anything that, 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 that would hinder you. Thank you, Jesus. I pray against the strongholds and the plans of the enemy. I pray for abundant blessings. I pray for financial and material increase. I pray for divine health over you, PBP. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. As you go and reflect and worship the reason for this season, as you pray and activate the gifts that are inside of you, may you remember the ultimate gift that you've been given in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you and somebody say congratulations on your gift and say thank you for my gift. Just say thank you for my gift. Tag somebody. I know that maybe they didn't put the gift inside the Christmas box or they didn't send you the envelope, but I want you to tag somebody and say thank you for my gift. Thank you for my gift. And if you don't like your neighbor, you can, you're more than welcome to say thank you, Jesus, for this gift that you have given me. Thank you for my gift, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Remember to click the subscribe button before you leave the channel. Even when you come back and watch the rebroadcast, even as you're sharing the broadcast with others. Amen and amen. I'll see you tomorrow at 5 a.m., my darlings. God bless you.